Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. I bet you did not expect to see me in a sweater today. When I got up this morning, it was 45 degrees. Talk about a temperature spread compared to what we've been experiencing lately. And actually, we have this beautiful sunny day, the air quality is good, and it's a nice temperature, so I'm not complaining in the least. Two weeks ago, I began my series of three videos that'll go over the course of a few weeks to detail how I prune back my tomato plants in order to get the most ripe tomatoes possible. So today it's time for step two. If you missed step one, be sure to go back and catch that. Today we get a little more drastic. Now you might recall from my first video that I had really pruned all of the tomato plants down quite a bit. And here we are, lots of new growth again. So today's goal is to rein them back in again do a little bit more pruning, and then we're going to cut back the water a bit to the plants as well. So I'm just going to carefully go back as far as I can and remove any branches that don't have tomatoes growing on them, or they maybe have flowers on them, and there's no way at this point in the season they're going to turn into ripe tomatoes by the time the frosts arrive. Now here in Spokane, we're in zone 5B slash 6, let's say, and we typically get our first frost around the middle of September. And here we are going into the end of August, so I'm on a timeline here. But yeah, I'm gonna do some serious pruning here and really take the plants back. It's important to be careful when you're making your cuts so that you don't trim off something as nice as this tomato. So this bed and the one right next to me have paste tomatoes in them. Those are ones that are real meaty. They tend not to be super juicy and that's the goal because we like to make tomato sauce, ketchup and salsa with them. So another point of doing this pruning, other than to have the plants focus their energy on ripening the existing tomatoes, is to expose the fruits to more sunlight because that will really help them ripen. And this is not going to hurt your plants in the least. I gotta be careful about this one. Looks like I can go right to there. And that one's just about ready to be harvested. So I actually do see more ripe tomatoes compared to the last video two weeks ago. And if you did the first step already as well, you're probably seeing more ripe tomatoes too, because this really does work. So you can see I'm really taking these plants down, but being very careful. Okay, so I pruned the bed on the left there, the one in the middle, so those two are the paste tomato rows. And then I also pruned this last row right next to our hoop house. Now that's where I'm growing Chef's Choice orange slicing tomatoes, the heirloom called Costaluto Genovese, and a Pandorino grape tomato. There are a couple of branches I wanted to show you that I pruned off. So these are off of the paste tomato plants. And you'll notice I've got these lovely little tomatoes here. These are not going to ripen by the end of our growing season. And here's another one. You know, you hate to do it, but I also have been doing this for years and I know that these have too much growing time left in them and not enough growing season. The next part of step two is to cut back on the watering of your tomato plants by roughly 50%. On my raised beds, I have a valve on each one, and so it's pretty easy for me to do that. I can turn it all the way off and then go back about halfway, and I know that's about 50%. If you're hand watering your tomatoes, 
just cut back on the amount of time that you're watering them. If you have a timer on your garden and you're able to cut back on the water that your tomato beds are getting, that would be perfect. One of the things I wanted to add is that as I was pruning back the tomato plants, I was pretty pleased to see a fair amount of tomatoes growing on them. So the plants did sort of bounce back, maybe not entirely. And if you haven't seen my videos before, what I'm talking about is the extreme high temperatures that we've had since late June. Also the fact that we're in an exceptional drought, so things are incredibly dry here. And it's been very smoky from the regional wildfires. But I do see quite a few. There is a bit of blossom end rot on some of the tomatoes that were developing when temperatures were really extreme, and that's to be expected. But the later tomatoes do not have blossom end rot, so that's a very good sign. Now on my first pruning video, someone commented that they were wondering about how my experiment was going with the red plastic mulch. So just to give you a little background, this is a basically like a sheet mulch and it's red. So the right color of the spectrum is reflected up into the plants. It heats up the soil, which makes warm season crops like tomatoes very happy. However, I do not like using plastic any more than what we do in our everyday lives. And I certainly don't like advocating it because I really want to be a sustainable gardener. So my goal was to test this and just have one of the three tomato beds covered with this plastic mulch and then leave the other two beds without it and see if there is a difference in productivity. Well, from looking at the plants today, I don't see any difference. And of course, as my luck would have it, I decided to conduct the experiment during a horrible growing season where the conditions were so awful. So I don't know if I should maybe try it again next year and see how things are going. But at this point, I do not see any difference. As a matter of fact, if anything, the paste tomato bed over there that does not have the plastic on it is doing better than this bed. I don't know. There's just too many variables this year. But I do want to keep monitoring it and just see if I think it is definitely not worth my trouble to use this plastic mulch on the tomato beds. And I did not use plastic mulch on any of the warm season crops other than this one right here. Now I need to clean up the mess I made. So because I do not have any tomato diseases, I can put these in my compost pile. If you have tomato plants that have different types of diseases, whether they're viral or fungal or bacterial, do not put them in your compost pile because that can continue the problem to future years. So I would dispose of it. But I can happily put this in our compost pile. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll do the final video in my three-step pruning process in two weeks. Happy gardening. Mm -hmm.